The purpose of this experiment is to use UV-Vis spectroscopy to probe the electronic structure of two different systems. First, we'll be using cyanine dyes, and then we will be using zinc oxide quantum dots. When you get to lab, you should turn on the spectrophotometer. Let the deuterium and tungsten lamps warm up for at least 8 to 10 minutes before taking a sample. To turn on the software, you should select the online version of the instrument and wait for it to load. When the dialog box prompting an operator name and password comes up, select cancel and wait for the software to load. To ensure that your lamps are on, you can look at this little picture and if they're both lit up, then that means both lamps are on. But in the event that they are not on, you can go to instrument, lamps, and then check that both the deuterium and the tungsten lamps are on. So when the instrument's warmed up, you can take the blank to account for the solvent and the cuvette. You'll want to put gloves on for this part, but now we can take the blank. So select your cuvette and mark the top with a sharpie so that you can tell that the orientation is the same every time you use this cuvette. And then go ahead and fill it with methanol so we can take the background spectrum. So make sure that the arm is up before you place the cuvette into the sample compartment chamber and then press the arm down to lock it in place. And now we're ready to take the spectrum. Before collecting the background, we'll need to make sure that the software is set up properly. Go to Methods and then check Spectrum Peaks and then go to Method again and check Setup Analysis. We'll need to make sure that we have um, three peaks but uncheck the three valleys section and then make sure that the spectrum is displaying from 300 nanometers to 900 nanometers. And then select OK. So now um, we have the method is untitled and the mode is standard and then the task is spectrum peaks and sampling is manual. So now that our software is set up properly, we're ready to collect the blank. To collect the blank spectrum, go ahead and select the blank button on the computer and the spectrum will be collected. Now that we've collected the background, we are ready to collect a sample of the cyanine dyes. So to remove the cuvette, lift the arm up to unlock the, the um, cuvette from the sample compartment and remove the cuvette. So to collect the cyanine dye spectrum, we'll want to use the same cuvette as we did for the background so that the um, inconsistencies are the same. So dump out the methanol into the waste and then fill the cuvette two thirds of the way full with the dye solution. It needs to be two-thirds of the way full so that we can ensure that the um, light beam goes through the sample. Replace the cap on the cuvette and then using a chem wipe you'll want to wipe the outside from any impurities that could interfere with our um, spectrum collection. All right, so return the cuvette to the sample compartment and ensure that the dot that you made with the marker is in the same orientation as before. And press the arm down to lock it into place. Now that we're ready to collect our sample, um, go to the sample icon on the screen and just click that. And the collection will begin. Okay. Now that we've collected our spectrum, you'll want to save the spectrum. So click it to make sure it's highlighted. It'll have these diamonds to know that it's highlighted. And then save it by going to File, Save, Save Sample As, and then um, give it a title that is your name and the date and the sample. And you'll want to save it in the public folder for this one. So it'll be in the C drive and then Users, Public, Public Documents, and then a folder that has your name and the date. And so you can save that. You'll also want to export the file so that you can access it in the computer lab downstairs. So to do this, um, you'll want to um, make sure that your um, sample is your selected spectra is selected, and then go to File, 
export selected spectrum as, and then select CSV format so that you can open it with Origins or Microsoft Excel. So select that, um, give it a title, and then you'll want to save this to your H drive. So under drives, you'll have to select H, and then that will ensure that you can access it from any computer on campus and save it. So now that we're done with the first sample, we'll want to rinse the cuvette and repeat for all the rest of the cyanine dye samples. After you've finished up with that, we can move on to the zinc oxide nanoparticles portion of the lab experiment. So now that you're done with the cyanine dyes portion of the lab, we'll want to clear out the existing spectra on the software. Uh, you'll want to do this anytime you're going to be changing settings or transitioning into a new part of a lab or where you don't want spectra that are overlaid. In order to clear the samples, press clear and samples on the software and you'll notice that the uh, spectral window is completely cleared out. You'll need to change the settings in order to investigate the relevant spectral region for the quantum dots. In order to do this, go to method, setup analysis, and you'll be looking at one peak in this case. So change it to one peak on the find and annotate up to one peak portion. And also for the display spectrum, you'll want to change that from to be from 200 nanometers to 400 nanometers. Click OK, and now the instrument is properly set up within the software to collect the data. In this section of the experiment, we'll be using a different type of cuvette. We'll be using quartz cuvettes in order to investigate uh, the spectral properties of the zinc oxide nanoparticles. Since we're using a different type of cuvette, we'll need to do a new blank and also a new solvent which is ethanol in this case. Notice with the quartz cuvette that two of the sides are frosted. And these you will not want to place in the, in the path of the beam, otherwise your spectral quality will not be good. Um, also notice that it will be unnecessary to mark the top of this cuvette because there are two different indicators on each side. The side of the cuvette with the little sun image will face towards the front of the bench such that the beam can go through that portion of the cuvette first. Since the zinc acetate is sparingly soluble in ethanol, there are a few tricks in order to speed up the solubilizing process. Uh, one of these tricks is immersing the solution in a sonicator. Um, here is the sonicator itself. You'll only need to do this for approximately 30 to 45 seconds, and since it doesn't need to be rigorously timed, you turn the sonicator knob to the left to hold it instead of to the right, which would set it for a specific amount of minutes to time it. Hold the solution carefully in the water that's inside the sonicator and make sure that it's completely submerged in the water and let this rest for about 30 to 45 seconds in order to speed up the solubilizing process. So in this segment, we're going to be focusing on heating up the solutions that are involved in preparing the quantum dots so that adequate gr growth of the quantum dots can be obtained. The first step is to set a hot plate to 60 degrees Celsius and ensure that the measured temperature is close enough to the set temperature. The set temperature is currently at 60 and the uh, measured temperature is 59 so it's relatively close and this has been on for a few minutes now about uh, three minutes or so and I've got a vial sitting on top to which I'm going to add 4.6 microliters of ethanol using a pipetter And, and two milliliters of the zinc acetate solution.
I'm going to lightly cap the solution while it warms up to the appropriate temperature. This should only take a couple of minutes. So while the solution is warming, you'll want to make sure that you have already taken a blank on the UV visible instrument with respect to ethanol. So once the ethanol and zinc acetate solutions are warmed up sufficiently, you want to add in 1.8 milliliters of the tetramethyl ammonium hydroxide solution, which will then initiate the actual reaction. So, take a micropipetter and a tip that's specific to it and add it in. Go back right here. And cap and gently swirl to mix. Now at this point, the reaction has actually been initiated. So you'll want a separate pipette tip with the pipetter set to 2.5 milliliters. that will be used to transfer the reaction solution into the cuvette for measurements. and quickly cap the cuvette, place it in the instrument, and you can proceed to take your initial sample on the instrument. Once you've taken this sample, you'll want to quickly return the solution, the reaction solution, back to the vial on the heater, on the hot plate, and cap loosely as before. Leave the vial loosely capped throughout the entire procedure. After this initial spectrum has been taken, as was demonstrated, you'll want to take a spectrum every 10 minutes until 30 minutes have elapsed, at which point you should take a spectrum every 5 minutes until 45 minutes have been reached. You'll take another spectrum at the 60 minute mark at which point you can remove the reaction solution from the hot plate, turn the hot plate off, and then take a final spectrum at the end of the lab period prior to cleaning up. Make sure that you export all of your spectra as CSV files to your H drive, and also that you save the individual uh, spectral files to the public folder on the computer. Once the experiment is done at the end of the lab period and all of your spectra are saved in the appropriate places, turn off the lamps on the instrument and close out of the software and turn the instrument off itself. Also, make sure that all of your waste is disposed of in the waste beaker and then ultimately in the appropriate waste container in the fume hood. Also, make sure to return all the equipment to where it needs to be within the laboratory and that the quartz cuvette is cleaned well with ethanol such that the next user will have a clean cuvette to work with.